Today, I'm going to show you how to create an HDR panorama from start to finish in Lightroom. Hi, my name is Klaus Hermann and you can find me on frappsbephoto.com where I show you how to create and craft better photos. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Lightroom to create one of the most complex types of images. We're going to make an HDR panorama by merging and stitching 21 photos to get a single 180 degree image that has sufficient details in the highlights and in the shadows. In this type of photography, you often need to capture a very high dynamic range due to the extreme field of view. And HDR is really useful in this situation. You basically capture an entire exposure series for each section of the panorama and these exposure series are then merged to HDR images, which in turn are merged to create the final panorama. Now this may sound like an intimidating process, but in Lightroom CC, Adobe introduced the ability to merge panorama images as well as HDR images quickly and easily. For a basic HDR panorama, that is all you really need. So you won't even have to leave the software and you can do everything from start to finish inside Lightroom. Let's check out how this works. Before we go into Lightroom where I show you how to merge and stitch your HDR panorama, let's talk a little bit about how to record it and how to capture the actual source images. Now, this is not a, a tutorial about how to shoot panoramas. That would fill a whole book, actually, or, or at least another tutorial like this. Uh, but there are just some basic things that you should um, uh, think about and take care of when you record the, the panorama because um, otherwise, it may be that Lightroom is not able to merge and stitch your images, whatever you do. Okay, so the very first thing is, it is always best to use a tripod to uh, capture your images. Okay, so we mount the, the camera to the tripod. But there is a, another thing that is important if you want the stitching to go smoothly. And it is, that is um, that you should be getting a panorama adapter of some sorts. Now this is my personal one and the images that I'm going to show you have been shot with a very similar uh, device. Um, and what this is is basically a rail where your camera is mounted on and a um, device that turns, where you, where you, that lets you turn your camera. And this one has uh, also got increments where it clicks to a specific specific position so that you can exactly record the different sections of your panorama. So this goes onto your tripod head and then you can turn that to the different positions. You may hear the, the click sound it makes. And that lets you rotate your camera exactly around the nodal point of your lens, which is important to ab avoid parallax errors, uh, which can be very bad if you like, if you want to stitch your image. And it can really ruin your, your whole panorama if you don't do this, actually, in certain cases. Um, what I did then was I switched my camera into manual mode. Then I checked all the different sections of the panorama to see which one is the brightest and which one is the darkest section. And then I dialed in an exposure, which lets me just about capture those both ends of the exposure range that I have in this uh, very example, from the brightest parts to the very uh, darkest parts. Um, after you dial in that exposure into your camera, you just go from section to section and record the, the uh, or capture the photos that you then can stitch into the panorama. Now, it is important to use manual focus mode so that your camera doesn't change focus in between uh, shooting the different sections and that you use manual mode so that the exposure remains at the exact same uh, values. Otherwise, you will have differences in exposure between the different sections and that can be bad for the final panorama where you see the transition between the, uh, a darker and a brighter part of the sky, for example, which looks very unnatural. So now we're here in Lightroom with the images for our panorama open. And what I already did is I put each exposure series for each section of the panorama into its own stack. Stacking is one of the features in Lightroom that lets you organize your images so that you, it, it is easier for you to keep track of what you're doing and, and keep track of all the different images. Now, 
in most cases, you probably come back from a shoot with all kinds of images and maybe different panorama uh, um, series. And stacking allows you to just group those images together so that you see immediately which ones belong to which panorama. Um, so you see here the different sections. I've shot this from left to right. And you see how, how the sections progress. You see that I have around 30% overlap. That's like a rule of thumb that you should uh, also keep in mind when you capture those images so that you have enough image overlap for Lightroom to work with because it needs to align those images and stitch them together, okay? Um, so, oops, sorry. So each of these stacks is uh, contains three images. Now let me um, select all of them and press S to expand them. And now you see the exposure series. Now, uh, you could argue that it's a bit on the dark end and, uh, and th on this particular shoot, I didn't have uh, an, awful an awful lot of time. So I chose the auto bracketing uh, mode. Um, and what I really should have done was maybe to uh, uh, record those images manually and um, set the exposures manually to really cover the entire dynamic range. But what you will see that Lightroom is even capable of merging and stitching um, panoramas in quite difficult cases where you have very dark exposures, for example. So I've just expanded those stacks and you see all the exposure series that we have here to work with for our final panorama. The first thing that I'm going to do is to merge each of those exposure series into an individual HDR image. And then subsequently, in the next step, we're going to stitch those into the panorama. But first, let's create the HDR images. Let me deselect. And I'm going to select the first three images, the first exposure series, and then press Control or Command H on my keyboard. And what that does is it brings up the HDR merge preview um, dialog or window in, uh, in Lightroom. And the nice thing about this is that it is a very, very simple interface. So there's not a lot of choices um, to make, and you're going to be very quick in creating your HDR images. Now, dedicated HDR software may have a lot of options that gives you a lot of control over how to merge those. But in this case, we shot it from a tripod. We, don't, we didn't have a lot of uh, movement or any other problems with ghosting in the, in the shot. So this is perfectly fine. By the way, you can actually de-ghost your images using those options um, here to the right. But I'm not going to do this. All I'm going to do is I'm going to leave on the auto-align uh, feature just in case we have very little uh, offsets between the images. Even though we shot it from a tripod, it is very possible that uh, you can have uh, slight variations between the images. And I will uh, let Lightroom deal with that by aligning those images. Should not do too much alignment, but even with a minimal offset, you could have fringing and all kinds of uh, different uh, problems in the image. So I'm going to leave that option on for now. And then I'm going down here and click on the Merge button. And Lightroom is going to indicate that it is creating an HDR up here at the top left corner. And once that's done, which can take a few moments, depending on the speed of your computer, um, we're going to go ahead and merge the next series. Now I'm going to uh, um, select the first image of the next section, hold down the shift key and click on the last one. So we have those three selected. Now the nice thing is that since the settings of the merging process don't really change between those images, I can actually go ahead and do the next um, HDRs, merge the next HDR sections much quicker by using Lightroom's ability to do the whole thing headless. So if you press Control H, it's going to show you the interface that you've just seen. But if you hold down the Shift key while you press Control H, so uh, Shift Control H or Shift Command H on a Mac, is going to use the same settings that you have used for the previous um, merge process. And it's going to merge the selected images uh, using those settings into another HDR image. Using this headless mode, you can now very quickly go through all the sections. I'm going to um, shift select the next uh, section here, press shift control H, and depending on the speed of your computer, 
you can just go ahead and do the same thing for the next section. And you will see in a moment that up here two bars appear and it says two operations in progress. So you can merge those images in parallel actually. Lightroom has just finished merging our HDR images. And once I scroll down here, you can see the seven HDR images that are resulting from the exposure series that I've shown you. And a very important thing to note here is that those resulting HDR images are actually raw images. So Lightroom merges raw images into another raw image, which means that we have all the editing capabilities available to us still, even if we merge an HDR image. That's why we didn't have to do any pre-processing. So normally if I would use Photomatix or some other software, I would have to, uh, to remove chromatic aberration and some other problems before I put those images into the HDR software. Here, we can nicely separate those two steps, the merging and stitching process from the entire editing workflow, just because Lightroom preserves the raw format throughout the entire process. So, we ended up with seven HDR images, all of them DNG format. And what I'm now doing is I'm just selecting all seven of them. And I am pressing Control or Command M on my keyboard. What that does is it launches the um, panorama merge function of Lightroom. And you see that the panorama merge preview shows up. And it's going to take a few moments to create the panorama preview. And as with the HDR merge uh, function in Lightroom, it is a very, very simple interface. There's not a lot of choices you need to make, which makes for a very quick and easy process to merge a panorama. Now, Lightroom has finished creating the panorama preview for us. And you can see the seven images stitched together into an entire panorama which covers a 180 degree uh, field of view. And you can also see that it had to uh, bend and transform the individual images so they fit together on the on their edges where they overlap. Um, for a single row 180 degree panorama, you can just leave the um, projection type at spherical. And then down here you have essentially two options. The first one is auto crop. If I click that, Lightroom is going to crop in the image to remove those uh, wonky and crooked edges that you've just seen. So it's going to reduce the area that you see of the image. In some cases that works nicely, in other cases that is quite problematic uh, because it removes a lot of space from your image. So let me turn that off and show you another feature which is called boundary wrap, which is currently at zero. If I start moving that slider, you can see that Lightroom starts to transform the image so that it fits into the rectangular frame that we have um, for the final image. And if I move that all the way to 100, you will not see any white areas around the edges because Lightroom has removed those and stretched the image in just the right way to cover the entire area. Now, in many cases that works nicely, but you have to watch out for um, the effects of this of these transformations or deformations that Lightroom applies. If you have lines going through your images, through your, through your image, it could be that that line is becomes uh, a little bit deformed. It's not a straight line anymore. It's got it may be crooked or a bent, for example. So you have to play around with those two options. And since we have uh, like this, these nice bending lines down here, I'm going to ease off of the boundary wrap just a little bit to avoid deformations of those lines. And I'm going to um, check the auto crop. So you can combine those two features to tell Lightroom, we'll just warp it just a little bit uh, and then crop off the, the uh, edges automatically. You can also see that the panorama appears to be quite dark. Now, on the one hand, that is due to the fact that the exposures have been a little bit on the dark side. So they were not ideal actually for creating such a panorama. But the other thing to note is that this is only a preview. Okay. This is not the result of any tone mapping step. The tone mapping, um, will be done in an entirely different and separate step, uh, after the merging has been completed. So 
don't worry if your panorama doesn't really look nice at that uh, stage. This is just a preview that Lightroom generated for you. Now, once I'm done with the auto crop and the boundary warp work, once I'm done uh, or I'm, I'm content and happy with how the uh, panorama looks, I just come down here and click on the merge button. And Lightroom is going to indicate again here at the top left that it's creating a panorama for us. And after a few moments, it's, it's going to be finished with that and you will have the panorama image in your uh, image browser area here in Lightroom. Lightroom has finished creating our panorama. And when I scroll down here in the image list, you can see that it already and automatically imported the new image into its catalog. So we have a new image with the panorama. And again, it's important to note that this is a DNG. It is a raw, uh, it is a raw image. So we can apply any editing that you can apply to a normal raw image straight out of, out of the camera to this uh, panorama image. And that is very nice because it lets us um, do all the toning in Lightroom's develop uh, module without any, any restrictions. So I'm going to select the panorama image and I'm going to switch to the develop module. Now I'm going to go about editing the image just in the same way as I would for any other raw image. So, oh, by the way, what, if you do an HDR panorama in Lightroom, you may uh, have, you may get this message. The image appears to be damaged. Now, from all that I know, the image is perfectly fine and you can do whatever you want with it. It's, you're not going to be limited. You're not going to run into any problems or errors. At least that was, was the case for any of my previous HDR panoramas that I did in, in Lightroom. This appears to be a bug in the current Lightroom version. So don't really bother uh, thinking about what this means. The image appears to be damaged. That uh, sounds frightening at first, but just ignore it. You're going to be fine, okay? So the first thing that I'm doing is going to the basic uh, tab here. I'm going to boost the exposure just a little bit. I'm going to bring down the highlights so that the details in the, uh, in the highlight areas uh, come back into the image. I'm going to open the shadows just a little bit. Some clarity here. And then I'm going to play with the vibrance just to see what it gives me. So it actually brings out the, the, the blues and the greens and the yellows here nicely. And if that's a bit too much for you, you can always dial down the saturation just slightly to counter that effect and not to have too much saturation in your image. Um, and basically, you can do anything you want with the image right now. Do color adjustments, add a vignette, anything that you can do with a normal raw image, you can do with that panorama. In this tutorial, I have shown you how to create an HDR panorama in Lightroom. We talked about how to manage and organize your source images using the stacking feature in order not to lose track. I've shown you how to merge your source photos for each section into HDR images quickly and easily using Lightroom's headless Merge to HDR mode. Then we merged the resulting HDR images into the raw panorama image. Due to Lightroom's unique ability to create a new raw image from the merged photos for both HDRs and panoramas, we did not have to do any pre-processing. The full editing capabilities were preserved during the merge procedure, which gave us a nice way of separating the merging from the subsequent editing. Finally, we edited the panorama image in Lightroom just like any other raw image to give it its final look. If you want more tutorials like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and sign up for our newsletter to get the latest and greatest Photoshop, Lightroom and photography tutorials straight to your inbox. That's all from me for today. See you next time and keep creating.